Welcome back to Reusable Space Program. We're on episode 11 already. Uh, so in this episode, as you can see on the screen, we have some uh, some missions or some some requests to go to Minmus, and uh, we need to land somewhere. We need to get some science. We need to get some money. So let's go to Minmus and land. So, you find us on the launch pad going up there, and you can see two crew inside a... Well, it's an X5 like last week, but um, it's different. Yeah, we've refined it. So we've got some extra fuel tanks on the base there, which is basically because the engine on that we're using, which is the same one as last time, the uh, the one with the two, two sort of thrust chambers, um, it has enough thrust to carry that up. So I can get a longer burn off it, which is quite nice. You'll also notice the fairing is longer, and it's orange because we've recolored it, we've changed the top bit a bit. So it's, it's the same concept of a craft, but we've just refined it a little bit. So yeah, so we're actually um, we're actually going to be doing a, a multi-part mission to Minmus. We're not going to send a single craft and bring it back because I did weird up and our, our X4 um, is capable, I think, with small landing legs, but it does not have the capability of landing on the moon. So Minmus would be a dead end for us. We'd have a craft that had, uh, landing legs, would return it to Kerbin, and it would be the end of the plan. I'd still have to develop something for the moon. So I thought, mm, let's build something that we can use for at least both of them, and then we can maybe change the landers. So what you're seeing going up into orbit is actually going to be our transport and command unit. Um, Interestingly, uh, I think the original one of the original mission plans for going to the moon by NASA, one of the original uh, two, they looked at direct descent and they also looked at Earth orbital rendezvous. It wasn't until later that they came up with lunar orbital rendezvous. So, so yeah, um, but not many people talk about the idea of uh, Earth orbital rendezvous. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to do Kerbin orbital rendezvous to Minmus. So we're going to send up this craft and this, I don't know if I've actually named it, I think I think I call it Moon Bus, a Moon Taxi. I don't know. Um, it's it's got Nakot and it's got Scott in it. So we've got a scientist and a pilot. Uh, Sean Sean is not on this craft. Uh, he may come about later. There may be use for him. What did I? Yeah, we we called it N1B because it was as you'll see at the back there. We now have the science for nuclear engines. So this thing is nuclear powered. Yeah, or nuclear powered. It's nuclear powered. It's basically. Um, a couple of small lander cans and some fuel tanks strapped around them because that's how we are safe. We have fuel around our pilots and uh, scientists and, you know, they, they love it. It's fine. They, they're cool with it. Anyway, we, we land the um, the X5. Uh, this is the X5B uh, back down onto the planet. And it's a nice, easy thing. Same parachutes as previously. Um, I might actually increase the number of parachutes for later ones and I may investigate landing legs. You see it falls over and it's fine though, so that's cool. So here we go, you'll see a shorter version where I've stripped out the uh, the extra tanks. This is this is me just trying a few different things so those extra tanks can be removed. And you can see again, we've got the I think twin, I wanna call it the twin ball, but I'm not entirely sure if that's the name of the engine. And you can actually see here the parachutes on it there uh, that go with it and it takes its fairing covering the engine with it. And this is just a really small one. And this is the craft that's gonna land. And um, yeah, Let's just say after this episode, we're not entirely 100% reusable, and you're going to see why in a second. So one thing I noticed when I sent this craft up was, uh, yeah, I would really like this one to do the rendezvous so I can save some fuel. And I started doing it, and then I um, I realized I didn't have any solar panels on this craft. This is something I fixed in later versions, but I realized I didn't have any solar panels, and the power was going down, and I thought, well, well I do have solar panels on the craft inside it, so I deployed them, you know, cheeky, as I shouldn't really done it, but I got my comeuppance because I was sort of cheating the system there because they weren't colliding, where the colliders didn't count because they started part of the same craft. And I was aware, you know, got to bring them in before we undock because otherwise things could go crazy. Um, however, I uh, I was a little quick. And you see here, uh, yeah, I was messing around there. I, uh, I, didn't, I closed them and then I opened them again. Um, Luckily, I had actually put the ones on that we were able to, because if you put the ones without a cover on, you cannot retract them. They're stuck out permanently. Anyway, um, so I'd already retracted them once and thought about this whole process, and then I decided I was going to bring them in closer for docking. Um, and the second time that I needed to actually do anything with them, I, I, I you're going to see. It's it's embarrassing. Um, 
yeah. So we've got our got our yeah. So, so you can see we just do, we're doing a standard docking procedure. I, I've 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 put us into a separate orbit. I've done a Hoffman transfer. Now I'm just going to balance out our speed when we get to closest point, and then we're just going to burn towards our target there. Close it down. Spin round. Wait for us to uh, to close up a bit. Zero out our speed again, and it, you know it's, it's a nice simple little docking procedure here. Actually, there's a lot of there is going to be a lot of docking in this episode, in, in this episode, but in this series, I feel, and docking is something that I have never, re I never really perfected. And you can see here, I'm, I'm still learning. I'm still getting better at it. So this was, you know, interesting. And then here we go. I start to retract them, and I detached just before one of them had retracted. You see? So there we go. We're no longer 100% reusable. We're about 99.95%. I, I haven't done the numbers. I should probably count all the parts and stuff and figure it out, but. Um, what I can say is I, I think I can send an engineer up and I can imagine that they would go out and collect the bits because I don't think they'd be they'd, they'd be bent and I can imagine an engineer would fix it. So I'm going to allow myself to retain reusability if at some point I can get an engineer when I've trained one high enough and Matt at the moment is not capable of doing this, I don't think. When I've trained one high enough, we're going to send an engineer and he's going to fix the solar panel and then I am okay. Now remember this is in uh, Kerbal 1.10.1 so it is not 1.11 which has the uh, um, a different mechanics I think so I'll have to check whether that's still possible in there. Anyway, I'm talking while we're docking. I actually ended up using the, the nuclear craft, the N1B to do this. Um, there isn't an N1A, I just built one craft and named it the M1B for some reason. Um, mm, yeah, you can see the docking. I was thrown off by the fact that I lost the solar panel. I was actually, why am I even doing this anymore? It's not a reusable space program, but I think I'm going to consider it still potentially reusable. They've got the bits in the pod. They just need somebody to reattach them. So anyway, we, we dock nicely. We stick out the solar panel because I want to taunt myself with it. Um, we're going to return our... Uh, our delivery craft, as we shall call it, back to the planet. A lovely little view there as it goes over the uh, the Terminator. Is it the Terminator? I think it's the Terminator when you see the, the Day and Night Terminator. It's pretty nice. I quite like it. I must say, I do like that aspect. I never actually noticed it until I was playing this series. I've used uh, EVE many times before, but um, I've not noticed as much of it as I have in this series, which is really nice. Um, so we come down and we do the water landing again. Splash, splash, splash. While that's happening, yeah, so, so Sean, uh, <laughs> Sean doesn't get to go to Minmus, doesn't get to land on Minmus, but what he does get is he gets to do himself a tourist contract because we still need a bit of money. So yeah, so I actually I actually put this in, in the middle. This is literally in the correct timeline as well. I actually did, I put Sean up to do this because um, I was trying to decide whether I wanted to wait for Minmus to be in a better location. And I just like, well, let's just throw another craft up. Um, so he basically goes up, gets up to the required altitude, comes back down. And then, uh, yeah, we fire the engines just slowly as he comes down. This, I don't believe, now it might be, but I don't believe this craft would be capable of going proper suborbital and then returning. I think I think we'd probably have issues um, just because of its its weight behind that small engine, because those, those cockpits actually weigh quite a lot. Um, so anyway, he comes up and does that. You can see he's happy, the tourists are happy. We get a lot of money for it. It's actually, I, I'm not gonna do many tourist contracts, but this one was really well paid for what it was, so I couldn't help myself. So, we, uh, we have actually lined up and done our burn for, for Minmus, and um, we're on our way there. And you can see we, we actually put ourselves into the barbecue roll sort of position so that we, we can actually get sunlight as soon as it appears. Um, given the solar panels and how they're positioned, though, I should have actually probably put it on the other way. Uh, used to find that, I think it was Apollo used to do this, they used to put themselves in what they called the barbecue roll. And the idea was that the craft would rotate around its axis a little bit, um, just so that you got even heat distribution. What we're actually doing is a little plane change maneuver. So you, you got to see a bit of burning, but yeah. So we've changed the the plane and I actually want to come ideally although our last Minmus visit was um, polar and I can get more more biomes polar in many ways I actually want to land and I want to make the docking as easy as possible when I come back up so although you know it's not massively difficult to uh, to rendezvous on angles because you know you've got you've got some good tools in Kerbal which is primarily you can look at the map view and wait for wait for the orbit of the craft you're, you're going to be docking with to be over the top of your target and then you launch into the plane. 
um, but I just want to do a poll. I just want to do a, a, an equatorial one. Um, I'm actually testing here to see can I get transfer of science between one craft and the other easily, and the answer is not very easily at all. Um, so this is the important bit. I am not sending a pilot down to the surface. We are, we, yeah, yeah, I'm jumping all over the place so you can see we've actually got the uh, the things going on. Um, we are going to send, and I can't believe I did this, I'm going to send Scott down. Um, I decided that I wanted to send a science down, scientist down first because the pilots get to do everything. And um, we have a control unit on the lander, so we do have basic piloting control, um, which means he can hold you know, retrograde, prograde, and that's not a problem. It's not like when he was delivering um, delivering material to orbit before and uh, when we came back, he didn't have any control. We've actually got a control core, core on there. So the, the idea being that actually after this mission's completed, I, I want to be able to pull this lander and move it around without having to bring a Kerbal out for it. So it's becoming a bit automated. And I think the whole program will probably end up more and more automated um, just because of the reusability of it actually taking a pilot around. It's, it becomes a bit of a faff. So there we go. We have detached. Um, yeah, uh, Scott is uh, Scott is on his way, which is quite scary, actually, to put a scientist down first. You know, um, the Apollo missions. I think they didn't really go for scientists. I think there were plan planned scientists were on, uh, on the latter missions, but uh, there was there was no. You know, they, they had to fight to get scientists to 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 go down there. Not the scientists didn't want to go. I think. Uh, it was deemed as being you know unsafe now one of the side effects is because i don't have a communication system around the planet properly around the moon properly of minmouth um i can't put maneuver nodes on so i'm going to have to do this um basic very basic so that control core will allow me to aim prograde retrograde but it won't let me put a maneuver node in so Scott, I, it's, it, it became a little more annoying than I thought it was going to be. So, you know, luckily it's Minmus and we're trying this with Minmus. And you can see we're just accelerating down. I've aimed for the biggest sort of flattest space possible because I don't know how it's going to go. And you can see there the one solar panel taunting me like a a, a, a one of your dog or cat or something. It's, it's horrible. It looks horrible. I, 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 I wish I'd actually put fixed solar panels on it. I don't know why I decided to put extendable solar panels on this craft. It just, ugh. um, anyway, I'm paying my penance for it because we're going to have to fix it somehow. So he comes down and, you know, landing on Minmus is probably the easiest easiest it is the easiest landing you can ever do with the exception of you know landing on on Kerbin when you're going very slow and you've got a parachute um, but even with with Kerbin at least you've got the difficulty of well I might I might get to go too hot or I might go at the wrong angle and I might overheat Minmus is very literally you know if you've got the the um, probe cores that allow you to go retrograde you just you know you've got time to make an error shall we say so the, the big problem with Minmus, Minmus is you can actually just over egg it so so S Scott is just taking his time um, if I if I did what I would I, I really wanted to do at this point which was slow down 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 I'd actually have like I'd use twice as much fuel just because I'm waiting for my craft to drop most efficient landing is the idea that you finish that that turn up to horizontal at the last second and you burn from the mo uh, from from this time you start your burn at full thrust to the time you land you don't stop burning now this is very much non-efficient landing that i'm doing but equally um yeah i'm being very careful and if i could do suicide burn on this i do not have any of the associated mods that allow you to calculate it so i could try and do it in my head but yeah we put down nice and gently and it's a beautiful landing in the end well done to scott kerman for becoming the first kerbal to step foot on another planetary body it's not a planet it's a planetary body it's a moon um so he does his science because that's what he does he's there to do the science he's quite happy actually he's not as ecstatic as i would have thought i'll be honest with you um interestingly he does not have radio signals so um we don't know if he's done it officially so so sean sean does not know that a scientist is the first man to walk on another planetary body um so there we go we're gonna do some hopping around and all that sort of stuff he's very happy isn't he it's wonderful 
We've got to plant our flag because this is the first time we've actually gone down. There we go. Yes, I should probably have got a special flag for that, but I have not. And uh, yeah, first, first Kerbal, first Kerbal, Scott Kerman. Yeah, uh, Scott Kerman, blah, 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 blah. I wasn't a pilot. You can you can pause it and watch that if you want, and you can see how many spelling mistakes I actually managed to make in that uh, in that in that little typing session. Also, why does it always seem to take so long to type in these things? I type much quicker than that normally. It's terrible. Look, sh sh Scott's Scott's bored out of his mind. Yeah, and I wish you could copy paste because you could put a really long thing in there. Anyway, we're gonna leave. We're going to leave Scott there on the surface, uh, unable to catch TV or anything like that because he has no radio signal. Um, we're going to try and maybe fix that next time. And we're also going to do some more science because uh, there's fuel left in them, their tanks. And uh, there is science in those hills and we need to get as much as possible. I am hoping to get maybe a thousand science, maybe 1,500 from this. This would be, that would be really nice for us. It really give us a kick forward. So with that, until next time, from me, from Scott, have a great one.